Good afternoon and welcome to the Midday News. Here's what we have in the bulletin. Concerns again been raised about how taxpayers' money is being spent. Pika says systems are in place to address online customs form challenges. And later in sports, Jamaicans compete at Youth Winter Olympic Games in South Korea. Thank you for joining us. I'm Shane Masters and here are the details. The Passport Immigration and Citizenship Agency is asserting that mechanisms are in place and the country's two major airports to assist travelers who encounter challenges completing their online immigration custom five form prior to boarding their flights to Jamaica. More in the support. It's been more than three months since the online C5 immigration customs form was implemented. During the earlier stages, there were several complaints about the platform. But according to CEO at Passport Immigration and Customs Agency Andrew Winter, those issues are a thing of the past. We have been working very closely with the airlines. Currently, it's around 71% compliance because we have to work closely with the airlines to encourage them to have the passengers completed. Many persons are unaware that up to 90 days before you travel, you can actually complete it and submit it online. So you can do it even before you leave Jamaica. So when you're coming back, you, you have already submitted and taken. That's one less thing to deal with. Thousands of unsuspecting visitors to Jamaica were lured into paying thousands of dollars by third-party websites after accessing and completing the form on behalf of the passengers. Mr. Winter again cautioned the public against swindlers while pointing to the country's secure site. I'd like to emphasize, go on www.enterjamaica.gov.jm. That is the site you're to go on. Right, and it's free. The agency says since the rollout, close to 900,000 applications were submitted. But as the agency moves rapidly into its digital transformation, reports of travelers encountering challenges prior to boarding their flights to Jamaica. We have um, tablets at the airport. We have customer service persons who are assisting the passengers who you say are not tech savvy and they can they will guide them through the process with the tablets Kerry and simpson tvj news the jamaica accountability meter portal jamp views as worrying the revelation that some government ministries have been unable to properly account for trillions spent over a 10-year period executive director jeanette calder says the permanent secretaries must be called to answer how was the money spent? That's the trillion dollar question being asked by Auditor General Pamela Monroe Ellis. In a Gleaner article, it was revealed that the Auditor General's department is being hindered from independently assessing how more than $1.6 trillion was utilized between two ministries and the Office of the Prime Minister, OPM. Those ministries are the Education and Health Ministries. Mrs. Monroe Ellis noted that for nine fiscal years, spanning 2012-2013, to 2018-19 and 2021-2022 to 2022-2023, 2022, Parliament approved $902 billion, representing 13.7% of the national budget, to manage and administer public education in Jamaica. However, no appropriation account was done. It was a similar case for the Health Ministry, which Parliament had approved $695 billion too. The Auditor General said the accounting officer in the Ministry submitted 15 of the 22 appropriation accounts for financial years 2013-2014 to 2022-23, but those did not meet the standards for submission. As for the Office of the Prime Minister, three appropriation accounts representing an accumulated budgetary allocation of approximately $12.02 billion dollars are outstanding. Executive Director of the Jamaica Accountability Meter Portal, JAMP, Jeanette Calder, says based on the revelation, the country has been left in a quandary. She says the issue begins and ends with the permanent secretaries. The permanent secretary needs to make sure that after four months when the year ends, she sends her report to parliament to say, what have we done with the people's money? All right. When that don't happen, Delia, who's supposed to come and say, what are going on? The people who get the report. Yes. Who are those? Are parliamentarians. So we have parliamentarians, for example, the Ministry of Health, 
for 10 years has not told our parliamentarians, told our auditor general what they have done with our money. How much money we're we talking about? Just a little bit under $700 billion. And that is a report that they have gotten every year for the last 10 years till it add up to $700 billion. What is the work our parliamentarians are doing for us? She says what needs to be done is for citizens to understand the accountability framework because only then will people be truly held accountable for the crisis facing the country. Who do we call for? The first time something goes wrong. The minister. minister. Mm. Gentle folks, there are right. seven. There, no, 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 Simone, that's the thing. There Envy? are 17 people in government with more teeth than a minister to that's sanction and to hold yes. people to account. Yes. We don't know them things that they mm. So when these things go wrong, who we call? The political representative who in the law has the least amount of power to do something about sanctioning and holding people to account. Councillor for the Morant Bay Division in St. Thomas, Ron Bryan, is calling for the church corner landfill to be relocated before the completion of the multi-billion dollar Morant Bay Urban Centre. His appeal comes as firefighters battered another blaze at the facility late Sunday into Monday morning. Communities around the landfill have been affected by the resultant smoke nuisance. In an interview with TVJ News, Mr. Bryan questioned what had become of plans to relocate the we dump. We came up with several ideas and the main one was to remove the dump from where it's at right now because we're going through so much with it we're making some proposal to in removing the dump and it seems as in fall and, and deaf ears now we are here at it again now as you can see it's it blazing up now look at this now we have a new town center coming in a few years ago, I think about two years ago they decided they're going to move the dump they're going to start truck some of the garbage out to Kingston they started it, and for, for, for whatever reason, I don't know why it was stopped. I mean, a few truckloads and then it was stopped. I guess it was a first phase, which <laughs> second phase never started. And as you can see, the pile up again, gone right back up again. So it's going to be a next first phase as far as I can see. Fire last broke out at the church corner dump in July last year. At a meeting of the Standing Finance Committee in March 2020, local government minister Desmond McKenzie said the National Solid Waste Management Authority had paid a deposit on the land to which the church corner dump would be relocated, adding that negotiations to conclude the purchase were well advanced. The Hillary session of the St. Anne Circuit Court opened on Monday with the usual parade by members of the Jamaica Constabulary Force, JCF. The Circuit Court will be hearing a total of 261 cases for the term. Topping the list, gun court matters with 73 cases awaiting trial. 64 cases of offences of sexual nature will be heard. Murder cases are third, 45 cases, and 79 other cases are scheduled to stand a trial. Addressing the opening trial, Judge Justice Andrea Pettigrew Collins reminded accused persons of the court's commitment to 50% on sentencing for guilty pleas in accordance to the sentencing guidelines. She also commended the police for their efficiency with the prisoner's delivery and acknowledged jurors. The circuit will be held over the next four weeks. Mayor of Port Maria Richard Creary continues to blast the Jamaica Public Service Company, JPS, over non-functioning streetlights. Speaking at the recent Municipal Corporation meeting, the mayor accused the JPS of scamming the government. Mr. Creary says of the 2,000 streetlights in the parish, 500 are not working. These streetlights work at a flat rate. They don't have a meter attached to them. So let us say for argument's sake, it is a million dollars for the 2,000 lights. If 500 not working, we should not be paying a million, we should be paying 750,000. But the government every month will pay a million dollars. So it is not in the interest of JPS to fix these lights. The, 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 the more lights not working is the more money JPS makes because they don't, they don't have to use any electricity to provide light for those street lights. The mayor says the situation worsened between last year into this year. 
Although JPS is in the parish, they have sent me a list of lights they have repaired. There are some councillors are here and will tell you that what, what they have done, what I have noticed that they have done. You report five lights in an area, they go in there and fix one. So it's almost as if they just, okay, you, you can't say we never fix any because we fix one. That's ridiculous. Right? So we are hopeful that the ministry will take our request seriously. And then I will guarantee that you will see a difference in terms of the service that, that JPS is providing to the citizens. Now and it's time for a break here on the Midday News. Stay with us more stories when we return. Welcome back to the Midday News. A 12-year-old girl is desperately seeking your help to survive. As Sandy Williams reports, the child's mother, Claudette Grant, is pleading for assistance to care for her daughter who suffers from sickle cell anemia. Annalisa Hall was born with sickle cell disease and at just 12 years old, she suffered four strokes. I remember one time I visited Bustamante and I think it's Dr. Duncan. I remember Dr. Duncan said to me, say, Mommy, whatever you are doing, continue doing it. Because for this child that got four strokes, she looked good. Right? And I turned to him and said to him, say, it's God mercy. Because of her condition, Annalisa's school life has been tough. Claudette Grant, her mother, reflects on a time Annalisa was bullied at school and came home crying. I called by the teacher at the same time and I said, Miss, what did you say happened to Annalisa? She said that she messed up her process. So I said, no, Miss. She said that, um, well, mommy, the children, them say she, she messed up herself. So I said, Miss, did you ask her if she messed up herself because she can't talk? She would tell her yes or no. She said to me, say, Mommy, you shall lead her, shall I'm not trained for that. Miss Grant has since removed her from the institution and is now awaiting a date for orientation at a school for children with special needs. This, however, may take some time, a major setback for the child who was due to sit the PEP exams. As for Miss Grant, financially, life has been brutal. I usually work and think, no, I'm in a situation where... I cannot, I want to go and work, but I cannot leave her like this. I cannot leave her like this because I'm scared of certain things that I hear going on with, you know, kids like these and so. After Miss Grant was forced to stop working to provide the care her daughter needed, she transformed her veranda into a shop with the hope of satisfying Annalise's medical needs as well as put food on their table. But because of mounting bills, her effort is just not enough. I would like to see she get some therapy. I help with some uh, medications and I have some tests for her to do. To assist Annalisa Hall, you may contact Miss Grant at 876-589-1468 or 876-880-5138. Sandy Williams, TVJ News. And it's now time for the Business Minute. Consumers paid almost 9% more for food last year. Statin says the point-to-point -point inflation rate for food and non-alcoholic beverages was 8.7% for December. Considering the month of December alone, the index rose by 0.3%. Food prices in the last month of the year increased by 0.3%. Non-alcoholic beverages went up by 0.8%. Food prices were driven by a 4.2% increase in the price for ready-made food and other food products. Fruit and nuts went up by 1.8% compared with November, while meat and other parts of slaughtered land animals rose by 0.3%. But the increase in the index was moderated by a 1.1% fall in prices for vegetables, tubers, plantains, cooking bananas, and pulses. Further afield, Argentina officially reported the world's highest inflation rate last year at 211.4% according to the country's Institute of Statistics Index. 
the South American country has been struggling to contain price spikes for years. 2023 saw the highest inflation rate recorded in Argentina in three decades. And that's it for the Business Minute. Time now for the top regional and international story. Thanks, Kalisha. And we head to a quick break. When we come back, Jeremy Brown will have your midday sports report.